start the recording now. Excellent. And then the WebEx assistant starts telling me all sorts of clever things. So I'm going to pilot this. Hi, I think we just need to do some introductions. Um, obviously, we're now on the um, silver sprint of the Cyber Camps project. We have over 850 girls and young women have joined us, which Ooh. is fantastic and excellent. Yeah, numbers. We've increased by 200 since before Christmas, which is quite right too. Like, like those kind of things. Elizabeth is driving at the moment around the North Circular, heading north in London. So is listening. She cannot contribute, and we don't want her to contribute for her own safety and everybody around. So yeah we'll just do a um, slide share and introduce elizabeth she works for cisco and with myself at the open university she co-leads this um project and it was her brain child we just were the um individuals that made it possible obviously i am the token middle-aged white man um hi i'm andrew smith from the open university i've been teaching cyber and cisco and other technologies for a very long time and i have the privilege of by working at the open university of being able to help this project actually happen and then we've got some great individuals and obviously um rebecca would you like to introduce yourself please Sure thing, Andrew, and, and welcome. Let, uh, let me reiterate what Andrew's already said and say welcome to you all. Um, good to have you back after Christmas, those of you who are returning, and hello to new people. Um, so yeah, my yep. name's Rebecca Harrop. Um, I have been a networking and network security and now cyber security person for a very, very long time, also. Um, 20 plus years as an educator, um, and about the in fact, more than that. Um, and I for my day job, I work at the Open University and at the University of Bedfordshire, um, predominantly teaching cybersecurity now, but also uh, many of the uh, Cisco uh, and NetACAD and Skills Rule um, courses. There you go. That's Excellent. Me. Thank you very much, <laughs> Rebecca. Um, Nicole's not able to join us tonight. She's based up in Manchester at the University Centre of Manchester. Um, she is a cybersecurity specialist. We have Bryony, who is based in Scotland at um, Glasgow Clyde College, who can't make it tonight because it's her daughter's birthday, which of course is more important. After all, who want, wouldn't want to eat all that cake? Elaine, are you able to chip in and say hello? Hi everyone. Yes, um, I've just got in from work, so I'm I'm a bit windswept. So cameras off. But um, yes, I I teach uh, cybersecurity. I'm a senior lecturer in Cardiff University in Wales. Um, a few years experience of cybersecurity, and and uh, also been teaching on the networking academy for a few years as well. Yeah. Um... It's it's always good to have somebody that's windswept and interesting in here. I mean, as you can tell with my hairstyle, that's always a problem that I've got. So it's great. We've got people from all sorts of different parts of um, the UK involved in this, and we have other experts that are involved as well. We're just going. To, is this going to be a very quick and informal session? And it's a bit like at the start um, last September. It's about sort of just telling you how to study because what's happened now is the pro has evolved a lot more people have joined for some this is a reminder and for some this is um, new information this is first time so firstly we need to talk about how to study and one of the great things about the way this is designed it's designed to be totally flexible and designed around you your own time and your experience so there is no magic, you must do 100 hours or even one hour. It's about what you can fit in according to your life commitments. And mo all of you um, who are in this would have um, signed up to NetAcad and you've got access to this domain, which is very private and for you and you only. So we do filter applications. Um, we do get one or two um, not female applications join, and then they suddenly wonder why they've been removed. And in this space is the place where we keep everything. We keep all the advice, all the guidance, 
and all the resources for this course. So it is worth reading through. And we have also stored here all of the recordings from the other sprints. So in the warm-up sprint, we did introduction to cybersecurity. In the bronze sprint, we did intro to cybersecurity and networking basics. And now in the silver sprint, we've actually got the network devices, basic configuration, network and basics and intro to cyber. And it depends who you are and when you start, where you wish to join. You may wish to skip intro to cyber and go straight into network and basics. And everything is there for you. So basically what we're doing is creating a cumulative and we're just building up as we go through time. And you can go back and study any of these at any time, but preferably in sequential order because if you're doing networking devices and basic configuration without doing networking basics you'll find some of the terms concepts and technologies can be very very confusing and this is where we also put links to the webinars we'll put copies of every webinar recording some of the sessions will be pre-recorded just because we're all volunteers managing our own time on this and of course we'll be taking breaks as well that is notionally where we think half term is for a lot of people but we know in the uk different education areas and different schools and colleges do different half terms we can't win so we just pick the one of them and say well yeah that is notionally the best place for us also, we have in here a set of support forums where you can come in and ask questions. And myself, Rebecca, Elaine, Elizabeth, and others keep an eye on that. So if you've got a question, we try to answer it typically within 24 hours. We've had a few questions and you can actually look in there as well. And I think the most appropriate thing is we do have safeguarding that so if there is at any time anything happens that makes you feel uncomfortable, you can approach anybody from cyber camps, any female um, member of the team, or if that is not right for you, you can email our cyber camps email address, reach out and share your concerns, and we will act. We are all DBS checked. Um, we have all done safeguarding training. We're all reasonable people. Most of us are parents. We understand. However, if you feel uncomfortable at any time, let somebody know and we will take action as promptly and as reasonably and as safely and efficiently as we possibly can. So. Keep an eye on this space. It is constantly updated. It's constantly edited. And we do email you from this part of the platform because this is the space and the place where we manage all the courses and resources for all of you. I'm just going to rearrange my screen very slightly. Sorry to go back to size. Is there anything you'd like to add to that, um, Rebecca? Um, no, not at the moment. I think you've covered most of it. Okay, that's great. You know, delegation. I do love that. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, what you we'll... flicked off it now. I was going to say that the only thing I might have pointed out is that on the messages, you can see you had some little green. So if, if we did send you messages, if you flick back for me. Yeah. Is that where you're looking? To see where the little messages, see where the little messages on the left hand side. So if we sent you any messages, you'd see them there. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll get them in your email as well. So um, Phyllis, a member of our team, tends to send out the messages. You'll see them from her, but you'll see any mess urgent messages from myself, Elizabeth, Rebecca or any others. So you'll see them in the platform, but they will also be sent to your emails as well. And sometimes it's worth checking your spam junk folders because, yeah, some service providers do treat this kind of mail as junk or potential spam or phishing. That is the way the technology works. But you know, if you have a look in there and you see an email from us earlier this today from Phyllis, then you will, um, yeah, if you mark that as safe, you should see other emails 
like that from no reply at netacad.com. Okay, just, moving on. Sorry, Andrew, one thing I you had. Ahead. Can I just jump in there um, to yeah, talk about the idea of safety? Um, I think a lot okay. of, of people are quite concerned in terms of um, asking questions because sometimes it doesn't feel like a, a safe space to ask questions. They might be afraid that the question is silly or it's something they should already know. And I think it's really important to share that there is no such thing as a silly question. Everybody learns if somebody asks questions and we absolutely love it if somebody asks a question and, and shows that they're interested. So I really want to encourage all, all the young people in the course and just say that this is a safe space to, to do that. We really do welcome questions. Everybody benefits if you ask a question and there's no such thing as a silly question. Yeah, and yeah, the chances are if you don't know, somebody else won't know either. And you probably asked the question they were hoping or thinking to ask and we'll answer it and we'll answer it whether it's in these training webinars or we'll answer it in the forums or sometimes we'll answer it by pointing you at something else for you to go and read you know we are all educators and sometimes we'll answer a question with a question or another task because it will help you learn and help you understand and we all got here by asking lots of silly questions. I mean, I'm well practiced at that. So I think Elaine makes a very good point. So let's explore skills for all. And one of the tabs I've got open now is actually the networking basics course that all of you are on. And those of you that joined on fri between Friday and now, we're adding you later today. It's just, it's an iterative process, but we have also put the links that you can self enroll. So if you want to use a different email address, we won't stop you if that's what works for you. Because we know that some of you have signed up using your school email addresses. Nothing wrong with that. But school email addresses don't last forever, do they? And if you want to use your personal Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, or whatever mail account, you're more than welcome to do that because you're seeing the link within the previous privacy of the community where we've already checked that you're um, yeah, eligible to be on this program. So if you sign up more than once, we're not worried about that at all as long as you've got access you're able to access and you're successful then we are happy the courses are all designed to be smart device friendly which means that you should be able to use it on your shiny shiny thing sorry um image of my grandson just appears there being cute but um here you just study all the content and you can do all the tests on your smart device and this is also designed to work on most operating systems and most browsers which means it should work on windows it should work on mac it should work on edge chrome and safari and firefox it will also work on ubuntu um, linux distro if any of you are techie and know what that is and what it will also it, give you as an option to download a piece of software called Packet Tracer, which will only work on a desktop operating system, um, such as your laptop. And that's a very powerful network simulator that you'll see more of in later webinars. What we do commend that you do is consider taking the My Knowledge check and find how much you know or don't know. It's not a, it's not a quiz that you've got to pass, but it is a very good tool in helping you discover where, where you're already at in knowledge. So it will help you plan how much study or how little study you need to do. And um, Cisco have used AI to help sort of weave you through a path to actually discover what your knowledge is. So if in a GCSE or in IT or in another context you've already learned something, it may help you go, oh, I'm already halfway there. 50% is better than nothing. And that'll help you build your confidence and help you understand 
what it is that you might understand as well. And once you've done that, this is quite an easy to navigate um, platform. And you can see it on the left, it's got a little green sort of like clock face that will show you your progress. And it's a very easy to read, easy to scroll type content. Andrew, and it, yeah. I'm still, I'm still, I'm not seeing all of your screen on our screen. Can everybody see? Oh, how about screen? everybody else? We might we might be sharing part of your? I'm still looking at some of your slides. I Go am on. actually sharing my whole screen. Hmm. And I'm might just be me then. My new... How about everybody so, else? So can, can they all see? <laughs> can a you green... all? Can you, all see, you can see skills for all. That's fine. Then I'll stop worrying. Just me. <laughs> okay, that, that's fine. As long as as long as everybody else is happy and you're suffering from chaos, it's just me. Like a, well, <laughs> it's just you. But it's Good. it's all very plain text. It's all very easy to read. And if anybody's got any additional needs or vision impairment or dyslexic, it is screen reader friendly. If you know how to use a screen reader, which individuals with those needs typically do, so you can actually get your operating system to read it out to you and most smart devices and iphones and such like do that as well you'll see there is a link to download um packet tracer and once you've downloaded it on your desktop whether it's windows mac or linux ubuntu you can actually install that run that and do some very interesting cyber security and network engineering activities as well what i do suggest and why it's quite a um, useful um, approach in your studies is keep a track of where you've reached, especially if you use more than one device. So whilst um, this resource will become bookmarkable, sometimes if you're using multiple devices, the bookmarks don't track between devices. So if you progress, let's say, for example, to um, section 4.3.1 and you're looking at Wi-Fi networks, keep a note of that. You know, write, write it down or keep a note, yeah, a voice note or a little note in your notepad software on your smart device. So next time you know where to quickly jump to because you can do the study on the school bus, on the tube or in the evening or whenever and it's just keeping that little note helps you keep a track and also take the time to do some of the checkpoint exams as well i'm not going to show you the checkpoint exam because that being too helpful but do do these because again it helps you understand where you're at with your knowledge and once you reach the end and you've done all the ch chapters and we follow the webinars each week to sort of follow sort of the principles of the chapters that you're covering um, then do do the final exam because the final exam is how you gain your digital badge and you've got multiple attempts so as long as you get 70 percent on one attempt then you'll get the digital badge issued to you as part of your studies as well, which is useful for your career. If you're looking to apply to university, you're looking to get a job, you're looking to build out your professional resume, nowadays digital badges are more popular than a certificate of completion because they are um, basically lifelong tools that sh you can actually use as part of a digital portfolio. And Cisco worked with an organization called Credly to use those badges on whatever platform you choose to use them. And if you're saying then that I'm a network basics expert or a cyber threat management expert, then there are a lot of employers who now take that quite seriously as well. So going back to the slides and moving on. Um, is there anything you would like to add to what I've just been saying, Elaine or Rebecca?
Um, I wanted to say, don't worry too much about the checkpoint exams, which I think you covered. You get an opportunity to take them again. So to treat it like a coffee break quiz, if you like, in a way of understanding what you what you might need to sort of refresh or look back up again, rather than being worried about them. Um, and there are practicals staggered that you were about to show, I think. There are practicals staggered around there that you can have a play with. Um, and indeed, pa packet tracer, which is great fun. So think of that as the the, the fun part and the, the practical application and the employability skills that are embedded within the course. Yeah. Elaine, anything you would like to add to that? Not really. I don't think you covered that, that really well. I, I think the resources, it is fun. It is interesting to use. Um, and don't think that you need to go through it step by step. You you can go back to things like you said. You can do the interesting bits again, or 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 just revise and and dip in and out. So, you, you know, don't be afraid to think. Oh, I, I don't really like this bit. Just look ahead, and uh, some of them won't let won't let you go forward until you've completed a bit. I think, but once you've done the basics, even if you don't quite get something, you can always go back and go over it again. So just make the most of it and enjoy it, really. It's a lot of fun. Indeed. So I've I'll, I'll just, just been powering up Packet Tracer, which I'll bring back into the screen shortly. I mean, how we will work with you, how we are working with you, and we've already described this partly, is that we're going to do the weekly webinars and we're going to record them. You interact with us via the forums. So if you've got any questions or any need for help, the forums on the main CyberCamp site here is where you seek support if you need support. And you are, in the nicest sense, on your own. You're studying at your own pace. And the Cisco curriculum on Skills for All is very well designed to take you on that journey. And if you just follow each step, it is quite a natural process. And all you really need to do is keep a track of each of the steps. Now, we've mentioned Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is quite a powerful network simulator. And yeah, we are not going to go into a lot of detail now. But what I am going to do, and I'm just going to adjust my screen to make this work for me, and I'll just make this a little bit bigger. What you can do is you can actually build very complex networks using the simulator. But you can also build incredibly simple networks as well. I've just put on there two PCs and something called a network switch, um, a device that um, manages local area networks. And I'm actually going to just put in a couple of cables and um, immediately we're going to start seeing some lights come on and the um, systems start coming up and running. And I don't know if any of you are studying computer science or um, have ever heard of Distra's algorithm, but those lights are actually demonstrating an algorithm they teach in computer science. But what we can do is quite quickly build on our desktop um, and actually build up a simple network as um, just like a home network. So this is called an IP address. I'm just putting um, a IP address on the PC on the left. I'm now going to put an IP address on the PC on the right. So if I did 10.0.0.1 on the left hand side, I need to do at least 10.0.0.2 on the right hand side. It's kind of logical, isn't it? And that subnet mask is telling us which network it belongs to. And you can see Packet Tracer has automatically allocated that for you. And if I then just go into the PC on the left hand side, and use something called command prompt, which is available on all operating systems. And it's like something out of ancient history in computing, but people still use it. Hackers still use this all the time, don't they, Rebecca? Very much so, yeah. Yeah, like you and me, yeah? But I'm going to use a command called ping, and I'm going to ping from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. I'm going to ping 10.0.0.2. And immediately, Packet Tracer is acting as your school, college, or home network. And it's actually sending traffic as if it's a real network. And that ping 
it's actually sending real traffic um, across from one computer to the other. And I know this because if I actually go into the right hand computer and I just use a command called ARP, and it's immediately told me that 10.0.0.1 has been sent in traffic to my computer on 10.0.0.2. And you'll notice in the networking basics and the troubleshooting and the configuration modules that there is a whole chapter just on ping and ARP. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol and ping is the sound that old war movies make when sonar from submarines hit. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm really gonna do it. It's that ping sound. <laughs> but you know You just want to is, pretend to be a that, submarine, don't you? <laughs> ab absolutely. I need to get out more and meet people, Rebecca. But genuinely <laughs> that is what that command is named after. It isn't an acronym. It is a geek a long time ago that named the command after a silly sound that um, is used in war movies to do with submarines. But here we are, that is what um, network engineers, cybersecurity engineers, geeks and nerds do, and we're in good company here. But I very quickly built that network and you know managed to send traffic across that network using IP addressing, cabling, a LAN switch, and two simulated PCs, which Rebecca, Elaine, Elizabeth and I think is very cool and hopefully you will learn that it's quite cool as well. There's a lot more in here. There are firewalls, there are security technologies, there are devices called packet sniffers amongst other things where you can actually see the traffic moving around as if it is a real network. In fact, we can actually connect packet trays there to real networks if we really wanted to but we're not going to on this course. So I'm gonna minimize that now and move back to the selection of slides and just sort of eventually move on to the most important thing, your priorities. Whilst we want you to be successful and we want you to study cyber camps, whatever you study, wherever you study must come first. Your GCSEs, your BTECs, your A-levels, your degrees, your apprenticeships, whatever are your priority. This is additional, but a great additional. We want to encourage you to become cybersecurity experts and cybersecurity aware, but we must yeah, implore that, you know, if you've got GCSE exams, revisions, mocks or whatever, we don't want to hear from any teachers anywhere them complaining that we are taking up more time than necessary from you. Um, it, no matter how exciting this might be. I mean, is there anything you would like to add to that, Elaine or Rebecca? No, I mean, I think I think that's the sensible thing that you're saying. And, and to reiterate what Elaine said before, if you sometimes the if you're if you're falling behind, sometimes just just moving forward and just sort of skim reading a little bit, perhaps. To, but also there's uh, reflective questions sometimes throughout the curriculum, which can be a real clue. So what you can do is sort of jump to the reflective questions and think which was the important bits that I was supposed to be getting out of the reading and then sort of reverse engineer it and re read backwards. And sometimes it's better to just keep moving forwards, uh, knowing that you can always go back and pick up something if you're missing it or you've not quite understood it later, rather than sort of getting left behind. But don't don't let it stress you or worry you above and beyond you know the the rest of the world it's not it's not supposed to do that um and indeed you know you have uh you have every chance and every capability to be able to just to just give it a go at the end and see how you, how you get on so um enjoy it i think is the key thing rather than let it be a a stress or a worry and get what you can out of the course when you can and the and the beauty about packet tracer indeed is in i like it because you're building little worlds and you're playing with things and maybe at this point you can feel think of it like a taster of do i enjoy this can i see myself doing this is this something that's that's bringing you know you, that i can foresee myself co uh, continuing as a pathway in the future 
then if you take if you take that from it then then and like andrew says don't let other things don't let it get in the way of the other stuff that you've got to do <laughs> whatever that may be yeah and i would also sort of add yeah have fun yeah go out socialize have fun meet with friends do all the good social stuff as well yeah it is tight sometimes you have to take the time out to put play before work and i'm saying this as an adult yeah and yeah we need to do the same as well yeah do have fun do study hard do do your primary studies and then do do um netacad and cyber security um cyber camps as well but if it's getting a bit of a drag take a break from it because this is good it's important but it's not the most important thing it's yeah it's something that you will find useful in your exploration of cyber security for the future and hopefully as we're sort of um working towards march we've done what the warm-up which is intro to cyber bronze which is network and basics and now silver which is um network configuration and we're building up towards easter 2024 when we will start on endpoint security so we're yeah we are doing that build up journey you need to know about networking to know about cyber security um honestly elaine um rebecca how many um, cyber security experts do you know that will cope without knowing a bit, a bit about networking? Zero, really. It's a found, it's a foundation, isn't it? You, you can't understand, you can't, you couldn't understand how somebody might attack a network without first understanding how the network itself may be configured. You don't need to know quite as much as perhaps somebody who's going to be a network administrator needs to know, but you have to have a, an understanding of how it's pieced together, certainly, and how and how many of the things might work. In in the same way that you then understand how they might disguise an attack or base an attack or um, how it might look, how, what normal network traffic would look like as a baseline, so you can then understand the anomalies and the things that are unusual that are happening on your network as well. All of that's part and parcel. So it's the foundations on which I think cyber has to be built. Elaine, do you have your own take on that um, opinion? Yeah, I mean, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. And and the difficulty is that even at university, sometimes people don't realise how important or how relevant networking is until they become reasonably good at cybersecurity. So there's a lot of the basics around cybersecurity that they, you don't really need to know, but to be good at cybersecurity, you have to know it. Um, and the way I, I kind of get students to take it seriously in the early days is, and, and you know, I, I, I can back this up with lots of examples, students who have graduated with, with a, a degree in computing or cybersecurity who go for a cybersecurity job, they are... <laughs> 99% likely to be asked a question about networking at interview. Um, so that that's how Im, how important it is to employers. So, you know, that that's how I get them in, on the first day when you start to look at networking. You need to know it. You will be asked these kinds of questions at interview. There's this little technology out there. It's called the Internet. And where do most cyber crime and attacks come from? Let's think about it. Oh, yes, the Internet. So what do you need to know in networking? Yes. I mean, you could become a coding expert. You could become a database expert. You could become yeah, a cybersecurity operations expert or information systems security compliance expert and many other types of expert. But at the base of it, there's this thing called the internet that we're all connected on where most of your troubles come from. Did I say that? Yes, most of the problems in the world of cybersecurity are yeah, first propagated by the thing called the internet. No, nobody now goes around with a floppy disk with a virus on that, do they, Rebecca and Elaine? I don't know. Don't underestimate the internal attacker there, Andrew. <laughs> well, first, how are you going to get a floppy disk? But not on a floppy disk. If the they're world? on a floppy disk, yeah. we might be fairly, fairly okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
but yeah, it's yeah, USB sticks and those kind of tacks still happen, but it is more likely, most likely. And mo if you actually look at cyber threats, yeah, they're, they're analyzing internet attacks by the millions yeah, every day across the internet. So yeah, old school approaches have gone, they're just a lot, lot less likely. And that's because of the way you know people people now use the technology, and of course it's high high reach, um, lower cost for the cyber criminals to do it that way. Yeah. So at this stage, thank you all very much. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you for listening, Elizabeth. We hope you haven't crashed yet. I'm going to stop the recording now. So if anybody's got any questions, then you can ask um, safely. So